Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lachlan and this is my booktube. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a chaotic review slash a little bit of a vlog slash maybe therapy session. We'll see how it goes. I am not going to include any spoilers for the first part of this video. I'm going to save them for the end and I will give you a warning for when I talk about spoilers. So this per first part is safe to watch if you have not read them. No spoilers at all. Promise. So I read the Ravenhood trilogy, which is Flock, Exodus, and then the finish line. When I tell you that I've never had a series affect me so much, that's no exaggeration. I need to talk about this. I need a therapist. You think I'm kidding? I'm not. So let's get started. So this trilogy is described as being a modern day take on Robin Hood with Fast and Furious slash Fight Club vibes, as well as being an unconventional love story about bad boys, anti-heroes, filled with suspense, romance, plot twists, some action, and a lot of emotion. So Flock starts out with our main character, Cecilia, meeting a guy named Sean on her first day at work. She starts working at her father's company in order to earn her stripes, so to speak, and to eventually inherit his legacy. So the quick backstory on that is that her and her father are estranged but she's living with him and working for him for one year is like the deal that they made. And she plans on helping her mother with the money that she inherits. Anyway, so she's expecting the year to fly by, but after she meets Sean and his friend group, things definitely change for her. It changes everything pretty much. So that's really what this book is about. And I went into this blind and I'm really glad that I did. It took me for an emotional roller coaster, okay. Uh, the men in this book are something else. There was a man in this book that absolutely stole my heart. I adore him. And shout out to my friends on Bookstagram for telling me to read this over and over again. I finally did it and it was very painful. I mean painful in the best way possible, if that is possible. But y'all, this book is so, so good. I fell in love with the writing immediately. It's just so, it's not poetic, like it's not a poem, it's not in verse or anything like that, but the writing is just so beautiful. I. I used like an entire highlighter on this series, okay? There's a lot of mystery that goes on. There were so many questions that I had when I read this book, but luckily the questions get answered throughout the series and the author does a really good job of keeping things from you only until she wants you to know those things. So yeah, I absolutely love this book. If you're looking for something with a little bit of dark romance, some suspense, you have to read this. This is a must read. Honestly, five stars. I can't not give this five stars. This series just, uh, overall, the series is five stars, but like individually, yeah, this, this one is definitely five stars. No question about it. Next up was Exodus. And when I tell you guys that I was not emotionally, mentally, physically prepared for this book, that's not a joke. Let me just include a little snippet of what I was experiencing whilst reading this book. Enjoy. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh my god. I hate this. It's just really sad. This book is just cruel. I want to die. There's just so much that I'm crying about. I hate it here. So if that says anything about my feelings that I was having when, while reading this, um, I was not okay. Nothing was okay. I've never in my entire life cried so hard over a series. Like, 
it just I can't I'm not gonna talk about why because it's a spoiler like I personally related to some of the things that happened and it just really hit me in the gut but I did not like the first half or it was about the first first third of this book I was not feeling because there was it was just insta love and I was not about it and I can't go into much else because it's kind of spoilery but yeah I just wasn't feeling it but then some things happened and then I kind of changed I ended up loving this okay this is a five out of five stars Kate Stewart just shattered my heart the story development the character development all of it was epic so yeah this one's heartbreaking and I will literally never recover I'm literally not gonna recover ever so after Kate Stewart tore out my heart and stomped on it and tore it to pieces and there's nothing left of my soul left I picked up the finish line and it honestly I struggled reading this it's really good but I just struggled so much because Exodus did something to me I've just never had a book break my heart so much and I was told by some friends on bookstagram that this book would heal me it did not I'm sorry for like slapping my book but this book did to an extent make me extremely happy in some ways and in other ways it just dug into an open wound that was it already infected and painful and it just dug 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 so yeah I cried during this one as well if I have a clip I cannot remember if I took a clip of me crying or not but I'll include it here If you just need to feel something, if you need to feel things, read this trilogy. Although this made, this book made me cry a lot, it also will give you a hug that you need after reading Exodus. It's just, it's like a really long epilogue. I think the author, I think she actually says in the beginning of the book that this was meant to be an epilogue and then it turned into a whole book. But trust me, after you read, and if that doesn't sound enjoyable to you, you just need to read it because you, you just need to read them, okay? Because after you read Exodus, you're going to be like, and then you're going to need the finish line. Trust me. Like, you can't just read Flock and then read Exodus and then just stop. Like, you're, you're going to need this. I'm telling you to read this series aggressively this is me aggressively telling you to read this series so that concludes my spoiler free thoughts if you have not read this series leave now leave now because the things that I have to say will ruin the series for you if you're one of those people that's like I like spoilers no read them and then come back and, and watch this. Leave now if you have not read these. Okay, so this is my spoiler section of vlog. I'm going to include the vlog of when I finished this book and what my feelings kind of were. So I'll include that now and then I'll come back and talk about my favorite scenes and things like that. Okay, so I just finished Flock and I loved it. I just, I have so many questions. There was just so much mystery going on. So many questions left unanswered. Like what, what did I just read? I mean, who knew rolling a blunt could be so sexy? Her dad is like a total douche canoe, but I'm curious to see like how it plays out. Like if he ends up being this like if there's something more to him, I don't know. He's just, right now, he's just a total douche canoe. Like, how he texts, I mean, how he emails her instead of texts her. Like, come on, bro. Like, seriously, it's your daughter. <laughs> so, Sean, 
I'm really conflicted with Sean because I really loved him, but then he became problematic. Later in the book, he like throws this like fit, like this hissy fit because she like said one thing to him and she cooks him dinner and then he just like throws the plate in the sink and like it breaks and stuff and then she ends up like apologizing. I don't know. They just like rubbed me the wrong way and I think he's like a total asshole now. It's like red flag. I still love Dominique even though they were both like in like the whole scheme or whatever. Whenever we were introduced to Dominique, I just knew. I was like, okay, this guy is a total asshole and I love him. Like, I want him for her. And then whenever they had their threesome on the floaty, <laughs> like I felt, I can't even describe it, how like giddy I was. I just felt like it was all my dreams coming true. And I love Dominique so much. He's so... He's just like the best boyfriend. Well, I don't really think that they're they were boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't even know what they were. But and then when he, how he steals her TBR and then buys her all those books. That was amazing. I love that. The author knows what we want. But yeah, half the time I didn't know what the fuck was going on in this book. But it's very good, very addicting, and I'm really excited to read Exodus. I'm gonna start it as soon as I'm done recording this. But yeah, um, who is the Frenchman? We don't know. We don't know who the Frenchman is. Um, oh, and I love Tyler. I love Tyler. I don't like Sean anymore. I love Dominique. Dominique can do no wrong. I would let Dominique murder me. Sean can go fuck a duck. I don't mean. <laughs> okay, I'll see you when I've read Exodus. So that was me after I had just finished Flock. My favorite parts of Flock was when Sean remembered her birthday. Also after the hike, whenever they were like doing the dirty after a hike, I'm like, this is weird, but like, I like it. I'm not mad at it. But the whole time, the whole time I was like, I love Dominic. I need her and Dominic to be in game. I love Dominic. I need her and Dominic to be in game. I needed it to happen. I loved him so much. Don't get me wrong, Sean was great and everything, but there were red flags with Sean. Like he was childish at times. Like when he broke the glass, when he like threw that fit because she basically told him that he's a little bit wacko, you know, that pissed me off when he did that. She made him dinner and then he just broke. It was childish. And after that, I really didn't like him as much. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna need her and Dominic to be end game. I was extremely giddy once her and Dominic got together because it was like all my dreams coming true. When Dominic stole her TBR and bought her all those books, I was like, oh my God, this is a man of my dreams. It's the spiciest man of my dreams. Exodus. So this one, I really, Again, I really didn't like the beginning. I just thought that her and Tobias were so insta-lovey and which normally, I mean, they weren't extremely, well, they were pretty insta-lovey. But I also just really miss Sean and Dominique. I mean, I didn't really miss Sean, but I miss Dominique. Like, I just wanted them back. I was like, I'll, I'll take either one at this point. I was like, okay, Sean and Dominique and Cecilia. That's a thing. I love it. It's, I'm... I need it and then Tobias comes in and they're gone and I'm like what the fuck like I know sure Tobias is cool and all but I don't I don't want him I want Sean and Dominique so when I tell you the scene the heartbreak Cecilia is like I just got him back and now he's gone I wept I keep trying to read the book and I literally can't like <laughs> the last thing he says 
obviously it's in French, but he says, we both knew, we both know I was never going to make it till 30, brother, take care of her. <laughs> Fuck me, oh my god. And then Tobias is like, mother greet you, father keep you, I love you, brother. <laughs> I literally cannot deal with this book right now. And then... Fucking Cecilia making my emotions even more worse. Page 22, 222, she's like, it's my fault. I admit, as I look up to see Tobias at the foot of my bed watching us, when he showed up, I was afraid he was here to hurt me. So he did just up on the stairs. <laughs> like, that was like their last. <laughs> Bro, he deserved better than this. This is fucked up. Uh, uh, this is... I don't know. How do I keep reading? I don't know how to keep reading. And the fact that, like... Sean just, like, keeps it together. Like, how? I don't understand how he does that. This book... This is cruel. I'm not emotionally stable right now. Honestly, like, haven't stopped crying. But for so many reasons, like, this book just keeps throwing punches. And, like, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm literally on page 420. And <coughs> I want to die. I don't know, maybe I'm just, like, a dramatic romantic, but like everything that it keeps saying and like the internal dialogue and just like the banter in general, just like everything is killing me and my heart cannot take it. Please tell me I'm not the only one to react like this. There's just so much that I'm crying about. <laughs> and if this ever makes it onto YouTube, it will be because Riri, <laughs> my buddy read. <laughs> well, I'm calling it a buddy read. <laughs> Whatever. Exodus. I finished reading Exodus last night. <laughs> the pain. I cried so much. I haven't cried this hard since I read Ugly Love. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover made me ugly cry. But this book, it's just so painful. Here are my thoughts about Exodus. I, I didn't like Tobias at first. I was so annoyed at the like <laughs> beginning of this book because I just thought that their relationship was so insta lovey and I didn't understand why they fell for each other so hard, why she fell for him so hard. Like she literally just like confessed his love for him. Or at least in her internal dialogue. I think she like is like, oh I'm I love him or whatever. Like you've been with him for like a month. I didn't like it at first. Like I was like, I wanna like stop reading this book because I'm bored. And then and then the thing happened <laughs> and then all I saw was red and it was just pain. That's not the only reason I cried in this book though. I mean, I cried for many reasons, but the, the event, I'm not even gonna say it, is the main reason. This book is like a total mind fuck. Also, I'm recording this at, at seven o'clock in the morning. So, I just wanted to capture my feelings before I move on to the finish line because right now everything hurts and I'm dying and I'm really sad and I'm, I'm thinking that the finish line will like do some healing. I will say whenever Tobias made Torrance wash her car for like basically calling her a whore. I was like, oh, 
Okay, and I like Tobias, don't get me wrong, like, I liked him. I really liked him. I just couldn't, I missed Dom. I missed Dominique so much that I was just annoyed by him. I wanted Dominique back. I'm sure others can relate. I wanted Sean or Dominique. At that point, I was like, I'll take either one of them, but I wanted Dominique. Like, Sean, I had conflicting feelings about Sean and Flock. Like, I liked him, but he wasn't the one. As soon as, I, you know, we, we saw Dominique, whatever, I was like, that that's the asshole. <laughs> like, that's the one that we want. So, I miss Dominique so much in Exodus. And, like, I just couldn't get over it. And I was just so annoyed. And then he comes back. And then everything falls apart. And I could barely keep reading. So, yeah, I just... In the beginning, I was just like, there's too much sex and not enough character development for this Tobias dude. Also, another thing that made me cry in this book is, I, why did I know? I just knew that her dad was going to have some kind of redemption. I ha I'm like a sucker for the characters that are like everyone hates them because they're portrayed as like this awful person and then it's revealed later that they were actually not an awful person and they were actually a really probably a somewhat of a good person I wouldn't say Roman's a good person but he definitely didn't deserve all of the hate that he got and it just that breaks me so much because God, all all the revelations about Roman and just everything in the the gun and the crib like I'm not gonna say anything else I hope you, you've read this book if you if you're watching this but like the gun in the crib thing also broke me because I was just like he was protecting her like he wasn't trying to be a bad dad and but so when Sean and Dominic came back and then some shit went down or whatever and they were like mad at her and then someone drugged her and tattooed her back i was shook i was like oh my god who the fuck did that <laughs> like which one of them did it and then she went all carry underwood on them like on the whole group and just fucked shit up <laughs> so badly another thing that annoyed me is that she couldn't even wait 10 months for shauna Dominique. I get that she was really dying for them and like didn't have any answers and I would have pro I would have been the same way like I understand but she couldn't even wait a year like a full year I think it had been 10 months before she basically falls in love with Tobias or whatever and that to me was so I was like girl not even a year and then later she like gets mad at Tobias for not waiting six years for her because he you know moves on. I don't think I'll ever recover from this book honestly. Um, there's no recovery. So let me talk about the reasons I cried. Obviously number one is Dominic. Number two is Tobias and Cecilia. After everything went down I really started to love Tobias. The hopeless romantic in me like deep down I just just like <laughs> I need it to happen and they just had so much struggle and it like wasn't gonna happen and it was just breaking my heart and then the thing about Roman like the truths revealed there made me cry and then in chapter 49 when she's like in the house and talking about how this is the house that like could have had a happy family but never did that shit got to me so bad because as someone who comes from a broken family I can't tell you how many times I've thought about that like what if you know what if things were not shitty and it's just so goddamn depressing that made me cry I was already like in pieces and her just walking in the house or being in the house or I don't know if she was looking at it or whatever but just talking about the house and the what-ifs 
I just couldn't handle it and I was just crying and crying and crying. Also, I don't like how Tessa acted towards Cecilia when she first saw her back in her shop. She was so rude to her and so just, ugh, I didn't, I didn't like her after that. I thought, I was like, her and Sean do, do deserve each other. <laughs> A character I really love, it's Tyler. I love Tyler so much and I thought it was so cool at the end when she saw him on the TV like in the White House next to the president. I was like, oh, I, I just love that character so much and I'm so happy that he's okay. We got a lot of answers in this book from Tobias. So, so much was revealed. Just so much between Tobias and Cecilia. All the hashing things out and her begging for him to take her and he just wouldn't. He's so goddamn stubborn. I took like a few notes of like certain pages that just got to me. Page three to four when Cecilia is speaking like her truths to herself saying that she's like worth it and everything. I was just it's so good. And then on page 415 where Sean and Cecilia are talking, he says deep down even though I have everything I'll ever want, more than I could have ever expected for myself, some part will always wish it was me. And then page 425 when he, uh, Tobias is confessing that he needs her. I just, this book has left me so raw and tender. I'll see you guys after I've read the finish line and hopefully Hopefully I'm not as unhinged. So yeah, this book just freaking tore me apart. Then I read the finish line. I want to tell you the last page of this book had me sobbing. I really couldn't emotionally handle some of the things in, in these books just because they hit so close to home. This series just deals a lot with the topic of grief and loss of sibling if you've ever dealt with that i lost my big sister in 2015 unexpectedly and so i just i know what tobias was going through and it was just really difficult to read anyway now that we've got that out of the way if you've read these books please comment below and tell me what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.